Hello, in this video, I wanna go through the process of setting up a business system in Adobe Illustrator. So first we are going to go to File, New, and we're gonna be creating a business card that's two-sided, letterhead, envelope, and I have the dimensions here. So let's start out with just a print document letter size, and we want inches. And for all of our documents, we need a document bleed of 1 8 of an inch, which is 0 0.125 inches. And as long as that chain link is connected, all of those should be the same. We want it print, which is CMYK color mode, and those default settings for print. So if I open up my window and artboards, you can see I have one artboard right now, and I'm going to rename that just so I know this is the letterhead. And if you have guides turned on, you should see your document bleed here, that red outline. So go to view and make sure that guides, if yours says show guides, if your guides are turned off, you're not going to see that. So you're going to want to go to view, guides, show guides and then you'll know that you have your document bleed. If you didn't set a document bleed, you can go to document setup and you should see the bleed set right here. So while we're in document setup, I'm gonna go ahead and add my other artboards, which are gonna be different sizes. So I'm going to zoom out, which is control minus and use my space bar to pan. And I'm going to draw another artboard. Let's create the business card, which is three and a half by two inches. And holding down Option, Shift, I'm going to drag another copy of that one. And you can rename those here in the artboards panel. Let's grab another artboard, holding down Option, Shift. And let's make this one the envelope size which is nine and a half by 4.125. And sometimes if you're working on a version one for a client, you may just want your letterhead on the file because you're gonna do lots of versions and iterations. But for this, since we're creating a system, I just wanted to show how to set up those different sizes of artboards and rearrange them. So I can just click the black arrow now to get back into designing mode. So the information you're going to include is listed here. And I'm going to show you an example of a letterhead now. In this letterhead version one, I did 12 iterations. And so I want you to take note of the placement of the logo and how the information is grouped together, the size of the information, the opacity of the logo or any background imagery and also the space around the page, the margins. Make sure everything has plenty of space for readability, unless it's a background image that might be cropping off the page. And then sometimes I found elements that I could work with for design. I'm going to go ahead and open this in Illustrator so we can take a look specifically at the opacities. So for instance, this logo as a background image is at an opacity of 7%, which is just barely visible. When that prints, it's going to print slightly darker. And we really want to keep the letter area where you're going to type your content. We need that to be most visible and contrasted against the background. So let's take a look at some of the font sizes the address, phone number, and web address are using eight point font. Eight point and seven point font are about as small as you wanna go on the text to make it legible and also look professional. I am using uppercase on the text, which also increases its visibility. And then this horizontal logo 
is about two inches in width. So we don't want it too large, but we do want it to be legible as it's the brand. This other content up here, again, is uppercase, and that one's 6.3 points in size. So again, those are kind of the minimum for legibility. And you can see around the page margin, I'm just going to do a measurement. So from the edge, this content is, the logo is 0.83 from the edge. You could make that an even inch. But in general, the content is at least about an inch around the page. And you can see that sometimes when I place the information, I'll use a separator between, say, the address and the URL. And maybe you can pull out some of the branding elements, like an icon. Now let's take a look at a business card. I'm going to zoom way out so you can see all the different iterations that I tried. I did some dark background ones and light background ones. I thought about different ways that I could use their color palette as accents. So if I look at this in trim view, you can see more of how the image is going to be trimmed out when it's printed. So there's some stacking their programs versus horizontally laid out, grouping the information. So the name and the title together, and then the phone, fax, email, and website group together. This text size is six point font. And again, that's a minimum. This website URL is 4.5 points, but it is all uppercase. So that makes a difference. When you're doing two sided, if the logo will fit in a nice way, you could have the logo on the front side and on the information side. So you can see on the side with the logo that I've got plenty of breathing room around the logo and the edge of the card. I tried some iterations with the tagline, light versus dark version. Here on this card, I did a slight background at 7% opacity, the abbreviation, and some color accents. Another point I want to make about the business cards is that we want to keep important information at least one eighth of an inch from the edge of the card so that if they were to print and trim these, that none of that information gets cropped. So let me show you how to do that. So if we zoom in to our business card artboard, let's draw a rectangle that is the same size as the business card, three and a half by two, and make sure it is centered horizontally and vertically to the artboard. And now we're gonna go to object, path, offset path. And I did this previously, but you're gonna to want to offset the path minus 0.125, which is one eighth. And click OK. And now you can delete the original rectangle. And with this rectangle selected, we're going to go to View, Guides, Make Guides, or Control 5 is the shortcut. And now we have a guide that will help us to know to keep that information within this area. Your guide may or may not be locked. While we're designing, we're going to want that locked. So you could either move it to its own layer, you could lock it here, or with a selected, you can go to View, Guides, Lock Guides, and now we can work on our design. And back over here, I want to show you how to save your file for both print and proofing. So you're going to want to go to File, Save As, go to PDF, and when you go to save, save as high quality. And for proofing, you don't need to preserve Illustrator. And then you're going to save a PDF. For the print ready version, you're going to want to save printer marks by going to File, Save As, go to PDF. And for your file name, you're going to want to do hyphen print at the end, save as PDF, save. And you're going to want to go to Marks and Bleed. And you could do all printer marks, 
for I'm going to do trim marks. And we want to make sure that use document bleed settings is selected. You can see our document bleed kind of grayed out here. So let me show you an example of what that one looks like. So here you can see that each of the pages has trim marks and it's using that bleed so that if they were to trim it unevenly, we would still get that background. I hope this video helps with laying out your business system. Thanks for watching.